and welcome to Lake Frankie's Online Family Experience. I'm Ms. Rachel and I'm happy you're here with me today. You know, I've been feeling lately like I have a bit of a bug. Oh no, 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 don't worry. Not like a flu bug or like the lice bug or anything like that. I mean a travel bug. I want to travel around the world to see some different things, particularly the things God has made, like oceans and beaches and mountains and waterfalls and jungles and deserts and neat animals and exotic flowers. Now, don't get me wrong, I've already been to some pretty special places and seen some cool things, but it's kind of addictive. I just want to see more of God's amazing creation. I mean, imagine this with me. Wouldn't it be neat to visit the Arctic with all that fresh white snow? Or to hike up a mountain to the very top where the clouds are? Or to explore the Caribbean waters swimming next to some colorful fish? All right, press pause and either think of or share with someone beside you three places around the world you would love to visit and why. God is truly the most amazing artist ever. Seeing what he has made, be it the sunset, zebras, or wildflowers, brings me joy because it reminds me just how big and wonderful and creative he is. Oh, there's that word again, joy. Let's remind ourselves of what we're talking about this month. Joy is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. I'll count to three and we'll say it together. One, two, three. Joy is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. Knowing God and being aware of what he has done and is doing can bring us joy. The more we learn about him, the more we understand him, the more joy that will fill our hearts. And that's important, not only to us, but to God too. Check out our verse of the month. A cheerful heart makes you healthy, but a broken spirit dries you up. Proverbs 17, verse 22, nerve. Having joy is good for your spiritual health and your physical health. All right, if you're at home today, try saying the verse while pretending to be three different animals. If you're at Lake Point on site with us, then turn your attention to the stage. So joy, what is that again? Well, joy is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. And our bottom line or focus point of today is Find joy in what you see around you. Let's say it together. One, two, three. Find joy in what you see around you. And right now, what we're going to see around us is the Story Lab. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about joy which is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. So what's with all this artwork? Just bringing a little nature inside. Well, I see a lot of nature here. I love how artists can look at something boring and see something amazing. Oh yeah? Like this one? It's just a big tree, but it's pretty unusual and really beautiful. Hey, what about this one right here? Oh. This right here is mostly weeds, oh. but it almost looks alive. <laughs> That'd be a great gift for my mom. You know, I kind of wish I could see this stuff this way. You like, you know, like an artist. Actually, I think everyone can see like an artist. And that's why I've invited someone to help us. Come on in, Joe. Hey! hey. Wow. Guys got a gallery going on in here. <laughs> hey, we're Where's so you? glad you can join us nice today. To oh, it's so good to be here. You know, I love to help people discover their artistic sides. <laughs> That's right. You're going to help us create our own paintings today. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, paintings? I I've never painted anything before. Yeah, look, don't worry about it. I'll walk you through it. Y'all ready? Let's do it! I like to call this the Painted Sunset Tree Challenge. Very specific. <laughs> okay. Now you're first going to grab your big brush out of the water jar. You're going to have a little bit of water on the brush to help smooth out the paint as we paint. Now what we're going to start with is our yellow. And we're going to paint the bottom half going left to right, a big stripe on our canvas. All right? The whole bottom half? The whole bottom half. Just go with it. It's something like this. And right now it doesn't matter how neat it is but you want to go all the way to the bottom. Make sure you get all the way to the edge. Okay. Oh, yours looks good. Thank you. 
And next we're gonna grab the orange, do the same thing, and we're gonna do about a three to four inch wide stripe just above the yellow. All right, so right here, leaving room above the orange stripe for the other stripes to go in. We'll have- This looks cool. <laughs> two more. Now, it's important though, if you want, to go ahead and blend it real light, do a light stroke Ooh. across the yellow. Let it fade Look in. At that. The lighter you touch the canvas, the better. The red color's next. We'll do the same thing with the orange. Remember, you've got two more colors to fill in above the top after this red. Great. All right, so let me guess, purple next? Purple's next, yes. got it. And same as before. Do about the same size stripe above the red, all the way across. Leaving room for the blue to go above that. Looking great. One more time, let it lightly blend in to the purple stripe below. Nice, very nice. Now for the moment, let's put away the big brush back into the water. And now we're gonna grab the medium sized brush that's sort of a square. We're gonna grab our black paint. You're gonna make a line. It's about a half inch to an inch thick. It goes right down the middle. When we get almost to the bottom, again, about a quarter way down. That's a nice tree trunk. <laughs> That's a nice tree trunk. After you get your trunk painted, we're gonna do a little bit of a squiggly line oh. and take the rest of the black and fill in as best you can. If you wanna grab the big brush again, it might, might get, it'd be a good time to do that. We're gonna paint in the bottom section underneath the squiggly line. After you get the ground or your hill colored in, we're gonna get our last brush, which should be a little thinner, and more pointy. This is where your artistic side is gonna take over. You ready, see? Uh, we'll see. You're gonna create your own branches that come off of your tree trunk at the top. However you feel that this tree wants to grow up into the space, you put those branches on there as you see fit. And they get even thinner the further away from the tree that you go. That looks amazing. What's wrong, Z? Oh, uh, I'm just not sure it looks right. Hey, you got this, okay? Just be creative. Think about that big old giant tree in your backyard. Uh, right. <sighs> Feel free to add in little touches of leaves onto these branches. So little dots. You can use the black if you want or experiment and try some of the other colors that are on your palette. Joe, yours looks amazing. Oh, oh wow. thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. Oh yeah, I'm loving it. So you can do as much or as little as you want. You wanna make this your own. These are just the basic steps to making this uh, painted sunset tree challenge. Let's see how you guys did. You ready? Yeah, okay. Three, two, one. one. <laughs> oh, Carter, that's awesome. Thank you. Look at yours. Yours looks amazing. <laughs> wow, you guys did a great job, especially for your first time out. These look excellent. Thank oh, you. Thank you. You know what, Joe? Thank you so much for coming here today and helping us out. We really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Hey, I'll see you guys around. Bye. Right, see you. Just think about it. One tree, three completely different perspectives. I'm going to look at trees in a whole new way now. Speaking of which, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Psalms. Long before there were high-tech lyric and dance videos for worship, there were the Psalms. 
For thousands of years, the Psalms were the main songbook of God's people, the Israelites. The individual songs, or psalms, were composed over many years. About half of them were written by King David. Some psalms are songs of praise or thanksgiving to God. Others share wisdom, and many are cries for help in a tough situation. The psalms speak truth about who we are, who God is, and the incredible world that God created. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. We all have days and times when joy seems very far away and very hard to find. But sometimes the best way to discover joy is simply to open your eyes and look around. King David was really good at this. Long before David became king, he was just a shepherd boy. He spent many days and nights alone with only the sheep, and he had all the time in the world to look around him at God's amazing creation. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in the whole earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. David was overwhelmed by the beauty of what God had created from the tiniest beetle on a blade of grass to vast galaxies spanning the night sky. I think about the heavens. I think about what your fingers have created. I think about the moon and stars that you have set in place. David poured out his heart about these incredible things in songs called Psalms. And today we're taking a look at three of them, Psalms 8, 16, and 19. The heavens tell about the glory of God. The skies show that his hands created them. Day after day they speak about it. Night after night they make it known. God has set up a tent in the heavens for the sun. The sun is like a great runner who takes delight in running a race. David learned to find joy in all of God's creation around him. And you can do that too. Even if you live in a city instead of the wilderness, maybe you've seen a flower growing out of a crack in the sidewalk or smiled when you spotted a curious bird pecking at crumbs. One of the best ways to find joy around you is to just use your senses. They're an amazing gift from God. Maybe not every one of your five senses works great, but that doesn't have to stop you from finding joy. Let's start with the easy one. Sight. If you're feeling bored or sad or frustrated, step outside or look out the window. You might see blue sky that seems to go on forever. Giant puffy clouds, a million green leaves, plucky dandelions poking through cracked pavement, funky looking stones or gravel glittering with fool's gold. <laughs> There's no end to the beautiful and fascinating things God made for us to enjoy. Now let's move on from eyes to ears. You can find joy in what you hear too. A restless breeze, the patter of raindrops, bird calls, or one of God's most incredible inventions, music. You can also find joy in what you <laughs> Smell! Though, let's be real, smells are not always delightful. <laughs> no, I'm talking about those awesome scents that can change your mood in a heartbeat. Grandma's cinnamon rolls, mm. the tangy smell of a Christmas tree, wood smoke on crisp fall air, salty sea spray at the ocean, fresh cut grass. Now, don't you wish this was smell a vision? Every single one of those scents and thousands more can bring you joy. And let's not forget our fourth sense, touch. A silky, wriggly puppy, sand squishing between your toes, a cozy, weighted blanket. And last but not least, taste. A perfectly juicy orange, melt in your mouth chocolate, cold, cold water on a hot day. God has given us countless ways to discover joy through our senses. But as David wrote, we can also find joy when we pay attention to the unique and wonderful people God made. What are human beings that you think about them? What is a son of man that you take care of them? You have made them a little lower than the angels. You placed on them a crown of glory and honor. You made human beings rule over everything your hands created. King David found joy and wonder in the people around him. He was just in awe of the way that God made us each unique and gave us the work of caring for all God made. So when you need a moment of joy, look at the people around you. Your baby sister's laughter, 
how the library lady smiles when she hands over your books, the way your teacher makes big gestures when he gets excited to help you learn something new. Like David, we can practice paying attention to the world around us, to all the amazing things and people that God created. And when we do that, we start to see that even though life isn't always easy, God is still at work. I keep my eyes always on the Lord, so my heart is glad. Joy is on my tongue. You always show me the path of life. You will fill me with joy when I am with you. When you look around and use your senses to explore everything God created, you'll discover there's always joy to be found. The end. It doesn't matter what else is happening in your life, there's always joy to be found by looking around and paying attention. God is doing amazing things right where you're at. There's no need to travel to the tallest mountain or the Grand Canyon to see his work on display. Not sure where to start? Well, try using your five senses, senses that God gave you to remind yourself of his goodness, his power, and his love. Or you could just try quietly pausing and looking around you for five things you could thank God for. Or if you're stuck, you could take a look at the Psalms and be reminded of how God can work good in any situation and how we can trust him. The evidence of God is everywhere. You know, friends, when we follow Jesus, God sends us the Holy Spirit to guide us. And joy is a gift from the Spirit. And paying attention to what around you is a great way to experience that gift. If you're having trouble seeing it, ask the Holy Spirit to open up your eyes to see all God's wonderful gifts around you. All right, it's time to bring it home now through small group time so long for your parent listen to today's instructions. First, go online with the grown up and research three places you've never been or three animals you've never seen that you'd like to in order to gain a better appreciation of them. Remind yourself that these places and these animals were made by God and he is pleased when you find joy in them. All right, press pause, enjoy the session, and then come back for the second set of instructions. Next, either inside or outside, find a spot to sit quietly and still. Then take some deep breaths. Think about what you can see, hear, feel, smell, and maybe even taste. Look for God's role in those things and find ones that bring you joy. Thank him and celebrate what he has done. Parents, now's the time to scan the QR code on the screen or head over to the Lake Point app to fill out our online connection card. Signing our guest book lets us know who's watching and helps us stay connected to you. It also allows you to sign up for our latest Lake Point initiatives and opportunities. So kids, when your parents are busy doing that, why don't you study your fingerprint up close? Something else amazing that God has made. your favorite Lake Point Kids online family experiences on our YouTube channel or on our Lake Point app in the family resources section. Thanks for tuning in today, friends. I'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Remember, find joy in what you see around you.